How's it going? So as Ramon, Ramon said, I'm Phil LaFond. I'm the uh, North American technical lead for augmented reality for a company called Bosch. You might have heard of us. Maybe you have a dishwasher in your house that's got our label on it, or maybe a refrigerator. Uh, we're not that division, uh, but we are a, a piece of that company. So in automotive service solutions, what we focus on is after sales of vehicles. So once the vehicle is manufactured, whether it's a tractor, motorcycle, a boat, a car, and then it goes out to the field, what do you do with it? How do you fix it? Um, how do you diagnose it? How do you connect to it? And that's where we come in. That's where we help most uh, manufacturers of vehicles support their vehicles after they're sold. So to give you a little bit more of an introduction to me, um, we've gone over my title. Yes, it's very long and my card is very full. Uh, but before working for Bosch for the last 10 years, I was an automobile technician. So when I graduated high school, went to train, technical training, became an automobile technician, got really into electronics and diagnostics of uh, complex electrical systems. And then eventually I bought my own precision tune auto care franchise on the famous Eight Mile Road in Detroit. Um, I ran that business for another 10 years and while I was running that business, I started freelancing as an automobile electronics trainer. So why is that important today? It's important because what I'm gonna talk about is how we're implementing augmented reality in a training environment. So as a trainer myself and as a trainee, I can see both sides uh, and this technology is improving the way technicians can learn how to fix something. So if you drove here today, or if you were in a vehicle of any kind, you know they're changing. So just three examples of systems that will intimidate the heck out of a tech. Okay, we've got uh, fully electric vehicles, no internal combustion engine. So a guy like me that's used to doing head gaskets and water pumps, guess what? I gotta learn a new skill. When we've got hybrid systems, now we've got internal combustion engines and electric systems, ugh, what am I gonna do? Right? And then we've got range extension devices and all sorts of things. Other things that we've got, if you drive a vehicle that has a cruise control system that's a little smarter than most of us, and it can keep the appropriate distance to the car in front of you automatically, and it can keep you in the lanes, maybe it bumps your steering wheel a little bit to keep you going straight, all that requires is cameras and radars to do that. So it's semi-autonomous semi features with systems like LiDAR, radar, and cameras. So when that rock hits your windshield, and you go, ah, oh, crap, here we go, and the guy comes out to replace the glass, guess what you really should be doing? Recalibrating that camera so it can see the lines on the road properly. These calibration procedures require lasers, targets, all sorts of things that we happily make and send to the dealerships, um, but it also requires training, okay? And again, this is new. So coming from a technician with 20 years experience, I can tell you when something new comes, it's a little intimidating, it's kind of scary the first time you see it. I love this graphic because actually it's pretty simple. If you've ever seen a wiring schematic for a 2015 automobile or newer, it's a lot worse than this, okay? So we're dealing with control uh, CAN networks. Your vehicle is a rolling network. There are up to 70, sometimes 100 different modules all talking to each other so that these camera systems will work, so they keep you in the lane, and so the airbag deploys when you need it, right? So understanding this stuff and really getting it is difficult for technicians to understand just reading a book. So just a nice little picture of a workshop with some fancy equipment connected to the car. Technicians are already pretty technically savvy. They can, they can navigate a computer, they can deal with PDF files, they can go to the web and fetch videos and other uh, related source material or technical material to research and fix a vehicle. So they've already got the smarts to handle all these new systems. We just need to make it a little easier for them to understand them and learn them quickly. To show you that Bosch is not new to training, and that we actually know what we're doing in a traditional training environment. This is an example of one of our training centers. So this training center in Europe in 2017 had more than 1,800 training sessions with more than 14,000 trainees. Okay, so 
we're not new, we're pretty good. We've got a lot of folks coming through the door in just this one training center. We have training centers in over 40 countries. So this video is gonna play. There's gonna be a little bit of music. What I'm showing you is the training session with AR. I actually can demonstrate this out in booth 319 for you. But this is a training scenario that we did uh, with electrical vehicle components. Technicians learn with their eyes. If you show me how to fix something, I can go do it. If you want me to read about it and look at pictures, I might have to consult the manual a couple of times. And I tell you, working, when you're working on commission as a technician, I, I have no business for that. I need to go, 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 okay? The other thing I want you to pay attention to, it's not about the AR. This guy is out of his chair. He doesn't have his phone in his hand. He's talking to the trainer. This is the power, right? This is where um, we get learning to happen. Get them away from the PowerPoints. Get them away from their phone. No laptops. Give them some cool technology to interact with and get them to visually see how this component works and how to fix it. These guys will remember this class. And when they go to their shop the next week, they're gonna be able to deal with this car when it comes in. I can tell you just based on my experience, when you learn something in a shop, the, guy, the master tech shows you and you go do it, right? Yes, we have to open service manuals once in a while, but you really don't like to. Uh, so AR is a perfect fit for this type of person. Somebody that repairs stuff for a living, that learns visually, put an AR scenario in front of them and teach them how to do it. So how are we building it? Well, we have the Bosch Common Augmented Reality Platform, lovingly known as CAP, not CARP. We leave the R off. Um, so we use the Common Augmented Reality Platform to build AR applications. This is a, a Bosch developed system um, where we have an XML editor and then we have a 3D content um, uh, environment. We have a publishing engine, et cetera. Um, and we use this to build these solutions for training. Um, and as we have, I've already talked about the complex systems, you can read the slide if you wish, but we're, we're going after this because of the complexity of vehicles and how fast the automotive industry is changing. Cars are driving themselves. They are doing it. I watch them do it all the time in Michigan. They drive right by you and the guy's doing this with his hands and it doesn't hit you. They work pretty good, but it's gonna be pretty scary when that thing comes into the shop because the tech's gonna be like, what the heck am I supposed to do? It's got this thing spinning on the top. It's got cameras all over the place. It's got batteries all in the back. So AR is the way. So how do we deliver a training solution? What does it look like? Well, as I've described my experience in a train, as a trainer, this is how we kind of how we designed it. We've got two modes. We've got trainer mode and a trainee mode. In the trainer mode, I, the trainer, have total control of where the trainees are in the, in the, in the uh, training session. So if I've got 45 steps to run through, I don't want somebody skipping ahead. Because then all of a sudden I get questions, hey, what about this? Well, I haven't talked about that yet. So slow down. And then you got somebody that might be lagging behind that needs a little bit more help. So it makes for a difficult classroom environment. So by controlling the class pace, we have a better outcome. Right, so the trainees are wearing glasses or they've got tablets, they are all tethered to me, so I control what step they are on. And then when I'm all done, and I want them to go experience everything by themselves, I just release them. Now they're still in the scenario because the scenario resides locally on their device, and now they can explore that vehicle or system or component all on their own from, the, from a different perspective. Maybe somebody likes to work on the car from the passenger side and maybe the other guy likes, well, I like to kind of be in the middle because I can see more stuff. Well, that's fine. You can see it from your perspective. Graphically, how does this look? Excuse me for using cars. I don't want to say this is an automotive focused application because it's not. If you have a tractor that needs this, sure. Airplane, fine. Spaceship, I don't care. If it's mechanical or electrical and it needs to be trained, this, we can support it. So this is what it looks like. Red is the trainer. Trainer's controlling um, the trainees in blue. They're all around the same asset. It could be a physical asset or it can be a virtual. We can just put the virtual asset in the environment 
and therefore if you have a prototype vehicle and let's say you only got a few hundred available, you can't ship them all around the world, that's fine. We'll just use the virtual model instead. Saves an OEM a tremendous amount of money when they don't have to make that investment because prototype vehicles are really, really expensive. And you're not going to have one for every training department in the world. So that's the benefit of, of do it using AR in a training environment. We, one of the other ones is that you don't have that huge investment in, in product. When we release it in trainee mode, trainer just disconnects, walks away. The trainees can start exploring the product vehicle or system that they're working on all on their own. And then if somebody needs a little help, a little extra help, we can create a private session and go off and, and, and coach that person a little longer. So I talked about CAP. I'm going to have a couple graphics for you. I don't expect you to review them very closely. I'm just going to tell you high level how this works. So CAP is kind of fun. Um, I say it's fun because I'm not a software developer, and I actually like to use it. Um, <clears throat> what it is is it is a content management system uh, and a 3D environment, and we've just created an AR platform that we can use to publish to multiple operating systems. We've also created it so that existing talent that's at our customers and within our own company can use it. So somebody that's already creating content for training material, owner's guides, repair manuals, anything printed, those folks can sit down with the editor and write the content with no problem. Insert the graphics, the videos, whatever we need, tables, etc. And then off it goes to either the same person or another person's work basket where they're going to do the 3D editing. So 3D editing, I've never touched CAD in my life until about two years ago, and I can tell you I'm pretty darn good at it now. The system is fairly user friendly, especially for a lot of our authors who have a technical background like myself. It's kind of intuitive how things should come apart and how they should look when they're animated. So this stuff is not real difficult to learn. But again, so we write the content, we deploy it to a server, the server, then we tell the server or the deployment mechanism what are we supporting? Is it iOS? Is it Windows? Is it HoloLens or is it Android? And then we publish it. Okay? And if the customer, internal or external, changes their mind later, that's fine. We don't have to rewrite the content. We just publish it to the different operating system. So a little bit more complex drawing just to add a little color to our lives. A um, little more detail here where on the, you see the authoring on the left. We've got XML editors, not software designers, writing content passing the, the job along to a 3D editor, which could be any of your graphic artists that you already have on staff. And then uh, building a tracking mechanism, which is a fairly simple thing to do with the tools that we've uh, developed. And then delivery mechanism. How do we deliver this application to the field? So I ran through this way, way too fast. <laughs> but when we talk to a customer, whether it's internal or external, this is how we do it. First step, consulting. Let's talk about the application that you need. Is it training? Is it a technical sales piece? What is it? And then let's talk through it. What are the requirements? Uh, what do you want it to look like? How, it, how do you want it to end up? And then software licensing. What operating systems are we supporting? Are you going to do it or are we going to do it? Because that's a different licensing model. Authoring services. Who's going to write it? Maybe you're a company that doesn't have technical writers. Maybe you outsource all of that. OK, well, then maybe in that case, Bosch should do it for you. OK, we do have the expertise. We have the staff, et cetera. So that we make that decision, what makes the most sense. And then integration and implementation, which, which really what I, this last step is, who's going to deploy the app? A lot of companies already have their, in, have their links with the app stores and the, and the Google Plays of the world, so you don't need us. So we'll just hand you the package, and off you go. Maybe you do need our help. Maybe you do want us to deploy it for you. And that's the final step. When, how does it get delivered? Where is it going to get it delivered? Is it internal only? Is it external? Uh, do you want, is this a consumer app? Is this only an internal technical app that you're only going to have your field reps use, et cetera? OK? So again, really quick, short and sweet. Um, just to overview, this is working. We're using it today. We're using it for uh, Bosch service centers, and I just delivered an application to a major manufacturer in the United States three weeks ago. And I do want to take, since I have the time, I want to tell you that story. So I went to 
I delivered a transmission disassembly application. So we put the HoloLens on. We're doing a HoloLens and Windows tablet. But you put the glasses on. We can track to the vehicle so that it just augments the, the CAD data right to the vehicle. So now you can see the transmission come apart step by step. There's a couple interesting, the, interesting perspectives that came out of that. So this was a, a global train the trainer. So the manufacturer brought all the global heads of training into the headquarters. And then I came in with the glasses and things to support it. And we walked them through this new vehicle and the new transmission that's in the vehicle and, and, a, and a repair procedure they know that's going to need to be done. Um, not frequently, but they know it's going to happen. right? They know it, at some point that you're going to need to do this. So they want to make sure that technicians are trained on how to perform this service. Basically, when I built the application, I took various sections of the service manual that are required to do this service and built a linear application. So now we took uh, seven sections of a service manual and made them into 16 steps. 16 steps with about just over 50 animations. So it's now linear. So I'm not flipping through a book back and forth, which is normally how you get trained. If you want to take this transmission apart, the first thing is you need to dis disable the electronics, disable the airbags, disable this. Those are all in different sections. It's a pain in the neck. It takes you more time to flip back and forth in the book than it actually probably need is to actually do the service. So we laid it out linear, and the trainer started doing the application. And at the end of it, when we're all sitting at lunch, I'm listening to these guys, and they're saying, that would have taken me 45 minutes to train one time with the book, probably would have had to do it twice. I do it with these silly glasses on. I do it in 15 minutes, and I didn't miss anything. I didn't expect that. I've been using AR for two years now, and I love it, and I think it's great. But I'm not so sure the rest of the industry has embraced it yet. But to hear that from people that have never, ever, ever used HoloLens before is incredible to me. So that was really cool. Um, so I just want to you know, give you that impression that this is working. And when we give it to a customer, it's impressive. Uh, and it's useful. This isn't, I'm not building video games. I appreciate video games, I do. And I'm not doing anything artsy. Uh, but we are doing things that are, have a real impact on, on people's lives, you know, how they can do something better and faster. So anyway. Uh, so if you have any questions, please stop by booth 319 um, here all week. Um, you can talk to me, and there's three other colleagues from around the world that can, that can answer questions related to AR. Again, CAP, Bosch CAP is a platform that we use to develop AR content. We do it internally. We you can hire us. We can, we can also license the product itself. Um, so with that, thank you very much. And I'll see you out in the show.